Well, the position of a car that has applied the brakes at time t equals zero, we, speak, we begin counting there, is s of t equals negative 1.5 t squared plus 63t. t is measured in seconds and s of t is measured in feet. So the car continues to move after the brakes have been pressed. And then complete the table and answer the questions. Include units in all of your answers. So what we're going to do is a little calculator trick on this one. And let's just go ahead and type it in. Let's type negative 10.5 x squared. So instead of t, we'll use x. And we'll also put the derivative in this one. And then der the derivative of this is going to be negative 21 x plus 63. And then the derivative of that is just negative 21, which really tells us what this entire row is going to be. Okay, so let's go to the table. Anything you have, delete it out, but we don't have anything. I don't. So 0, 1, 2, and 3. So what I have here in the table is what I'm going to put on paper, but I'm going to put a lot of units. And this is just going to reinforce the idea of writing the units over and over. But at time t equals 0, the position of the car is 52 point, whoops, 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 whoops. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's looking in the wrong place. Ah, zero feet. Zero feet. Okay. Well, at time t equals one, the position of the car is 52.5. There it is. Feet. I was going to say, the car had traveled zero at zero, right? And at t equals 2, the car has traveled 84 feet from its starting position, and then 94.5 feet from its starting position. So now we're going to deal with the velocity, which is 63, 42, 21, you see the pattern, 0, which means the car has stopped at this point. And we're going to put units in this, and this is going to be feet per second, feet per second, feet per second, and feet per second. And then acceleration is negative 21 feet per second squared. And let's just save ourselves the trouble. That goes all the way across, right? Okay. What is the average velocity of the car? Well, the average velocity of the car is, again, not finding the slope between velocities, but finding the slope between the positions. So we are going to reinforce some old ideas here. S of 1 minus S of 0 over 1 minus 0. And that's going to give me 52.5 minus 0 over 1. So 52.5 feet per second is the average velocity on the first of the first second after the car, the driver of the car has hit the brakes. We want to estimate the velocity of the car. Oh, they're asking us to estimate, not find the exact, but we're going to find the estimate of the velocity of the car at one and a half. And the estimate of the velocity is somewhere in between here, because one and a half is between one and two, obviously. Now, you might be tempted to average these two numbers, and that is not necessarily what we're going to do, although the answer is, I'll go ahead and tell you, the answer would be the same if we did, but that's just a, a coincidence based on the way the equation is set up. The velocity is the slope of displacement. So I'm gonna find the slope between the two points around one and a half. And doing so, these, is going to give me feet per second, which is a measurement of velocity. So that's going to give me 84 minus 52 and a half over 2 minus 1, which is 31 and a half feet per second. Okay, if you wanted to estimate by averaging these two, we're not guaranteed to get the exact same value, okay? It's, it's not always a safe bet. What is the average acceleration? Again, don't average to, don't find the slope between two points of acceleration. Find the slope between two points of velocity and the units work out to the acceleration. And so we're going to have, you, by the way, you know the answer to this, right? Because you, you know what the acceleration is just all the way across the board. There's a constant acceleration as soon as this person hits the brakes. So V of 2 minus v of 0 over 2 minus 0, and that's going to give me 21 minus 63 over 2, which is negative 21 feet per second squared. No surprises there.